Hey guys, I'm RNG Gamer. I play all my games randomly. Welcome to my game room. Today I thought we would talk about my Super Nintendo collection. When I woke up this morning, I was like, let's do a, let's do a smaller collection today. So, you know, we're kind of busy. And then I pulled all this crap out and I was like, oh my God, this is going to take forever. <laughs> it's so much. The whole couch over here is just full of stuff. So I looked up the value of all of this stuff on GameEye, and it's all worth over like $5,000, which blows my mind because my Super Nintendo collection is one of my more, we'll just say curated collections. But like I said last time, I'm going to put the prices that I paid for all this stuff and the current market value on the screen so you can see when I talk about it. Because I can't remember how much I paid. I always say like, yeah, I paid like two bucks. That, that's probably not accurate but I do have the prices written down on a spreadsheet, so I'm going to share them with you guys. So sit back, relax, let's talk about this collection. Also, if you haven't already and you like my content, please like, comment, and subscribe. It's the best way to help the channel, and I'd really appreciate it. Up first, I'm just going to show you some awesome B-roll. Awesome. I don't know if it's awesome. I think it's awesome. <laughs> B-roll of my boxed Super Nintendo console. This is the Super Mario All-Star Super Mario World bundle. I picked this up from a buddy for, I'm going to say a few bucks. I don't know how much. You can see it on the screen, <laughs> whatever that was. And also, here's a quick just overview of just kind of like how the collection looks on the shelf. It's kind of like haphazard. I have one of these like old school storage cases where I, I keep some of my games. So things are kind of like out of alphabetical order and, but it looks cool. I like it on the shelf and it, it, it's a nice conversation piece. People mention that all the time. And here we have my Super Nintendo that I actually use. This is the slim, thin, tiny, whatever model. I like this one because it, it takes up less space over here in my cabinets where I keep all my consoles. And I know there's some like flaws with this, like maybe the image isn't quite as clear, the sound is bad or something. I don't know. I can't tell. I can't tell, guys. You can let me know what's wrong with this, but here's how much I paid for this thing. Is that a good deal? I don't know. Is this like worth anything? <laughs> First up, we have like Acme Animation Factory. I don't even know what the crap this is. This is in my backlog. I've never played it. I think this is like a ripoff of Mario Paint or something like that. So not maybe not like even really a game, just kind of like a tool. Whatever, if you ever played that, put it in the comments. I'm pretty sure this is pretty terrible. If it was great or even like good, you would have heard about it and I've never heard about it. And obviously like I know a little bit about games, so. I finally played this game just like a couple years ago, and I thought it was fantastic. It was as good as everybody said. It's a like a combination of a side-scrolling action game and like a city management sim, and it's Act Razor. The cover's like nondescript, but it's a really cool game. I enjoyed this a lot. I beat it, and my daughter, who was like maybe six or seven at the time, like watched me play it, and she loved the 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 city sim part where you fly around as like the little cupid angel baby she thought that was really cute great game this is kind of like a must have on the system so if you don't have it pick it up what's wrong with you <laughs> this is one of like the more beloved shoot 'em up shmups on the system and I've never played this it has a really interesting view uh, it's done by Konami who isn't really super known for a lot of their like vertical shmups but it's Axale supposed to be a really great game. It's in my backlog to play. I get to the shmups pretty quickly. They're almost in their like own separate backlog category. So like I'm, I'm usually playing one fairly often. So I work through them fairly quickly. Hopefully this one won't be too long. I picked this up not that long ago. Uh, this one has some uh, doxing information on it. Let me cover this up. It's got like a phone number and a store name on it, but it's... <laughs> Battletoads. Oh man, I'm like flipping the bird. Oops. <laughs> man, the like <laughs> no good deed goes unpunished. I'm trying to like protect some company like from getting like bombarded by a bunch of prank calls. And I like accidentally flip off the camera. I'm sorry guys. I didn't mean it. It was an accident, I promise. 
<laughs> it's Battletoads Double Dragon. I've never actually played the Battletoads Double Dragon game. Uh, I, I think it just plays like Battletoads, right? But it has the characters from Double Dragon. It's supposed to be pretty cool. This is kind of somewhat pricey, maybe. I don't know. Is it? The, Super the Nintendo one's pricey. I have that one also, and I've not played it. But, eh, whatever. Let me know if this one's any good. I was at a game store in the middle of, like, nowhere. I, I mean, this... This was like in a little hole in the wall retro game store that was like between like a tanning salon and like a pizza parlor. Like it, I don't know. I went in there and it was a disaster. They they also did like Magic the Gathering stuff and like Warhammer and there were just cards and like plastic figurines everywhere. And I, I bought something there. I can't quite remember what it was. I think I might have bought like Thunder Force 4 on the, or Thunder Force 5 on the PlayStation or something. But as I was leaving, I looked down and this guy had this box of like Super Nintendo stuff. And I looked at it and I was like, what is this? He goes, those are all like homebrews and reproductions. And I go, oh, what are you, you know, what are you doing with it? And he's like, I'm just going to throw it out. You can have it if you want it. <laughs> or maybe he said like, you can have them for a dollar a piece or something, whatever. You're going to see, here's the price. I, I wrote it down, like always. Um, but this is Castlevania Dracula X. And this is... Like the weird port of like Rondo of Blood on the PC Engine that they did on the Super Nintendo <laughs> that is supposed to be really good, but not quite as good. Anyway, this game is like a wallet buster on the Super Nintendo. And like I said, this is a, a reproduction. I only played, paid a couple bucks for it, but I wouldn't have like sought this out, but I'm also not going to pass it up for free. However, if I do like see a real authentic copy of this in the wild, I'll, I'll replace this. I've also not played this game. <laughs> I have like I have no idea what it's what it's like. I mean I do. I know what Castlevania games are like. I have no idea what it's like, guys. No, I've never played a Castlevania game. I only mention them in like every video. <laughs> this one I've played a fair amount, but I never finished it, so it's back in the backlog. I've told a story about this in a video where I like it's one of my best pickups videos. One of my best pickups videos? No. The best pickups I've ever had video. I forget the name of that. I don't know. Whatever. It was a good video. Go watch it if you haven't. <laughs> I just told stories of like my craziest game hunting finds. Anyway, this is one of them. And it's Castlevania 4. They call Super Castlevania 4. Anyway. I was at like a church rummage sale looking for like baby clothes or something like that. And I found this box of like old computer games and like old mice and controllers and just random kind of video game stuff. And I'm digging through it and I look over and the guy next to me, he's like holding this game. He's holding it. And he goes, I was, uh, I, 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 he didn't say anything. I approached him and I said, Hey, uh, I'm looking for the box for that. Does that have the game in it? Could you, can you like give me the box or let me buy the box from you and you keep the game? And he's like, Oh, like I didn't really want, I was just kind of like holding on to it. Here you go. And he handed it to me and I went to check out and it was $1. This was $1. This one I do remember. I paid $1 for it. I don't know what it's worth now, but you're, you probably just saw it below. This is a fantastic game. Uh, a lot of people say this is their favorite Castlevania game. I don't know that anything will ever beat Symphony of the Night for me. <laughs> that game is just its like one of my top three favorite games of all time. But this one's great, and I can't wait to play it again. Although I'm going to play it on the the Konami Castlevania Anniversary Collection on the PS4 or whatever it is. Many people probably consider this to be the best game on the system. It's Chrono Trigger, there it is. Now, mine is not complete in box. I bought a collection from a guy and I paid, you know, a couple thousand dollars for some games, you know. And he had several Super Nintendo games in it that were like boxed, but this is a reproduction box. And I, I paid less th for the game than I did like what it was worth loose. But I didn't throw the box away. I mean, it does protect the game and it does look cool, but I never like try to pass this off as like the real, the real thing. <laughs> this, but the box looks pretty good for reproduction, but the cart's authentic and the manual's authentic. And I don't know if the insert is authentic or not. I haven't validated that one yet. Do I need to like carbon date it or something? But great game. I have played through Chrono Trigger twice and I feel like I need to play through it again. I don't know. It's in my backlog again. I want to try it. The, when I played through it before, I was not as much of a 
video game connoisseur as I am now, or as I consider myself now. So I want to give it another shot and see if it's as good as everybody says. I know it's very good, but is it like, is it really that good? In 2023, is it like the, the greatest RPG ever, like a lot of people say? It's also relatively short. You can play through it like 20 hours. This was in that same box of like reproduction games. I don't know anything about it. It's Chrono Trigger Crimson Echoes. This is obviously like a a ROM hack of it. I don't know anything about this. It's just sitting on the shelf. Like I said, I paid whatever I paid for it. Maybe it was free. Maybe it was a couple bucks. Maybe it was $5. I don't know. Not much. And uh, is this any good? What, what's the difference with this? Should I play this? Should I not? Like, it's. I don't think it's in the backlog. Maybe it is. I'm not sure. <laughs> you let me know. <laughs> I played this a fair amount on the Sega Genesis, and it was not good. It's in my backlog to play on the Super Nintendo. It's a... It was jumping on that like Mortal Kombat craze with like the digitized graphics, but it was all claymation characters and it, it was fine. The characters were kind of like meh and the gameplay was kind of meh, but it's Clay Fighter. <laughs> I don't know, guys. This was, there were so many bad fighting games during that time period, like Shaq Fu and everything was around that time period. I was just so disenfranchised with the whole thing that I didn't play any fighting games for a long time after that. <laughs> But I'm going to play this. It's in the backlog. This is like an ultra super wallet buster on the Super Famicom that strictly limited games re-released, officially licensed on the Super Nintendo, and it's cotton 100%. And mine is sealed here, and this took for flipping ever to come in. I, I told this story before. I was at the Shaky Knees Music Festival, and I just so happened lucky me, to be in the VIP section for Foo Fighters. So as Foo Fighters were just coming on stage, I had an alarm set on my phone to go pre-order this, like right when it became available, because I was like, it'll sell out in like 15 seconds. So I'm sitting here at this music festival, Foo Fighters are playing, they're like rocking out to Monkey Wrench or something, everybody's going crazy, and I'm looking from this VIP section on a crowd of like 30,000 people or whatever it was, and my like internet was bad, and I'm like trying to order this game. Because <laughs> I was like, it's going to sell out, and it didn't sell out like for months. It may not even, you may be able to just go buy it right now. <laughs> man, what a, what a world, like, oh man, Foo Fighters, oh. Anyway, I only missed like five minutes of the show, guys. It was a great show, by the way. But this is a great game, too. <laughs> well, I mean, Foo Fighters isn't a game, but this is a side-scrolling shoot-em-up. You play as this little witch. Is she Cotton? Is her name Cotton? I don't know. It's a side-scrolling kind of horizontal shoot-em-up. It's a cute em up I've never actually played Cotton 100%. Or if I have, it's only for a few minutes. I think I played it at my friend's house, and he had, like, the legit thing on the Super Famicom. But we played all the cotton games that day, and I don't, like, remember much about it. But I need to go through and play this one and get the one credit clear on it. This is in my most recent pickups video, I think. Next to most recent or whatever, I picked it up at a Mario Day party on March 10th. Cyberspin, I don't know anything about it. It looks like it's a top-down racing game, similar to F-Zero. I paid $6 for it. I do remember that. I can remember that far back, guys. <laughs> Six bucks. Let me know if this was pretty good. Someone mentioned that it was decent in the comments of that video, so I got a little bit more enthusiastic about it. My favorite puzzle game series of all time is Magical Drop. I have like an innate, inherited, evolutionary, like, talent for playing that game. I don't know what it is about Magical Drop that makes me so good at it, but like, I can clear, I clear the arcade like one credit cleared the arcade mode on the Neo Geo on my first try. <laughs> like I don't know why I'm so good at that. That's just the game I'm great at and I really enjoy it. So Retrobit put out this compilation of some Data East classics. Some of these games are not classics. That's debatable. Some of these I'm like, eh, whatever. But I had to pick this up. It has Fighter's History. Focus, focus. Here we go. Fighter, no, work. Fighter's History. Fighter's History, I guess, two. Side Pocket, that's a billiards game. And then Magical Drop 1 and Magical Drop 2. And this is what they look like on the back. So Magical Drop 2, which is, they're over here. They kind of are like reverse Tetris. It's a mixture of Tetris and like Bust a Move. Where you have these like gems at the top and you're trying to group them. But you, you like pull down 
a, a row of gems and move over and shoot it back up. So it's like almost like a slide puzzle. Anyway, I love the game. It's really fast paced and interesting. I don't know crap about Fighters History 1 or 2 and Side Pocket, maybe I've played it, maybe I haven't. But this is sealed. I got this on sale from their website and I haven't opened it yet. But it's all in the backlog. I'll play it. I picked this up at the Game Jam South like last year. Guy made a really good deal on this for me. I traded him a bunch of random Vectrex stuff for it. I don't remember. <laughs> no, 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 no. This isn't a pickups video. I picked this up from my buddy for $100. I did this in the $100 giveaway video. I paid $100 for this. It's Demon's Crest. And I have only played the first... Uh, it's not Demon's Crest. What is the name of it? Gargoyle's Quest on the Game Boy. But I have all three of them. I have the one on the NES and I have this one here. This is the third one in the series. So looking forward to this one. It's in the backlog. I remember this one. It was 100 bucks. How much is it worth now? It was worth about like $100 when I picked it up. So, man. Are things crazy? Did it go up? Did it go down? I don't know. I have to put the numbers in later. <laughs> this is in another pickups video. I picked it up recently. Disney's Aladdin. It was in a bundle with a bunch of Super Nintendo stuff that I found at a yard sale, surprisingly. I know the Super Nintendo version and the Genesis version are like completely different. Or not completely, but relatively different. I played the Genesis one. Genesis. I played the Genesis one a fair amount, but I've never played the Super Nintendo one. I know it's worse, but is it like easier? Because <laughs> the Genesis one's like brutal. Anyway, let me know about this one. I've played all three of these games here and there. I think maybe I finished the first one, but the other two are in the backlog. Anyway, it's Donkey Kong Country. Classic. Blew everybody's mind when it came out with its like awesome digitized graphics. It looked so cool. And Donkey Kong Country 2. Diddy's Kong Quest. People always say Diddy Kong's Quest. No, it's Diddy's Conquest, like attorneys general or brothers-in-law, right? Mm. Ooh, how, how pedantic to say that. Anyway, it's weird that they went with that. <laughs> Diddy Kong's Quest is actually better, but Diddy's Conquest is what it is. Anyway, another cool one. I don't remember where I picked this up. I, I can't remember, but you can see how much I paid for it. I think I this is in a, this is in a collection. I bought a collection from somebody and this was in it. I'm pretty sure. Am I? I, I don't know. <laughs> and of course, Donkey Kong Country 3. This is the one I'm least familiar with. I don't remember a super ton about this one. I think this is in the backlog again. I only ever played like two and three at a buddy's house when I was a kid. And so on like a Friday night while we were like pounding pizza and soda. And we I don't think we made it very far. <laughs> Maybe my reflexes will be better as an adult. Do we have to do like a bunch of like riding in mine carts in this one <laughs> mine cars mine cart let's think about this is it mine cart or a car because train cars cars ride on tracks with wheels right a train car but a cart carries something in its open top man i don't know i don't know if it's a mine cart or mine car hmm that's an interesting one guys let me waste some more of our time thinking about this. <laughs> Looking on the phone, we're gonna figure it out. It's minecart. Thanks, Wikipedia. I wish you were around when I was in college. <laughs> things were so much harder. Everybody talks about like, things were worse back in my day. Well, let me tell you, looking stuff up on the internet, it was worse back in my day. <laughs> All right, up next, we have a pretty bad port of a really great game. It's more famous for just like being able to run on the system. Uh, and it's actually famous for being able to run on every system, including like gas pumps and pregnancy tests and stuff. But it's Doom. Doom, the symbolic gesture of all human advancement, right? Can we put this game on everything with a screen? It seems like we're really trying to do that. Did you see the guy that like ran it on a graphing calculator and he powered the graphing calculator by using like potato batteries like like that middle school experiment used to do. his whole garage was full of like 600 rotten potatoes but he generated enough voltage and current to power graph and calculator to run doom that blows my mind man i want to see this like run on like a hearing aid <laughs> anyway i picked this up i think at a yard sale and it came complete i was really surprised to see it i didn't know how much it was worth at the time and it was not worth what it is now i don't know how much this is worth but i know it's gotten a little pricey 
Pretty sure that's from the Stop Skeletons from Fighting videos. He loves talking about Doom ports. So this is probably due to him. Thanks, Derek. This I've never played. I hear people talk about it and it sounds fascinating. I know it's a god-awful, terrible RPG and it's probably like the cheapest RPG on the entire system. But it's Draken. Draken, Draken. It's hard to say. Spelled very odd with the with the double K's and an H after it. Draken. Anyway, let me know about this one. This got a sequel called Dragon View, which is very expensive and sought after. Like maybe six or seven hundred dollars, but Limited Run Games like re-released it, and it's one of those games. It's like I've been waiting like two years for it to come. <laughs> maybe it'll be. Maybe by the time you're watching this video, like maybe we'll say eight years in the future. Hopefully, this video is doing well eight years in the future. That they will have shipped that game to me. Ah, I jerked off my microphone cord. <laughs> I jerked off my microphone cord, guys. <laughs> oh, man. I jerked on my microphone cord and it pulled off. Whew, okay. Fantastic. I played this. You guys requested me to play this game and then, like, nobody watched the review of it. I think I, maybe I went a little too hard into the editing. I don't think you guys like when I, like, edit my videos. You just want to see, like, the uncut me making mistakes and fumbling through all this crap. I don't know what the deal is. No one watched that video. So if you haven't watched my Earthbound review, maybe it's because my, my thumbnail was too good and the title was terrible. <laughs> but this is a fantastic game. It's probably the most sought after game on the system, but it's Earthbound. This set in my backlog a long, 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 long time before you guys picked, picked it for me to play. But I enjoyed it. I thought it was a fantastic game. I don't think it's the greatest game ever. It definitely relies on its zaniness and quirkiness and its like memorable moments over its gameplay and story to like stand out. And I, I think it works. Not having any real nostalgia for this though, like I, I didn't give it a 10 out of 10 rating. You have to see what I gave it. Go watch that video. Help that video out because I busted my butt on that one. This was in that same box of like homebrew reproduction games and it's Earthbound Uncut. I don't know what this is. Like I said, I, I thought about playing this right after I played Earthbound, but to tell you the truth, man, like after I was done playing Earthbound, it took me a while. I was like, I need a break from Earthbound for a little bit. But this was done by Qu Twin Star Gaming Designs. This is like a company that makes homebrews and it says limited edition. I don't know. Does this have like any value? I don't know. I'll, uh, I guess below you'll find out if I like <laughs> discovered if it did or not, if it's worth nothing. I picked this up and I went to Japan. This isn't sealed, but like Japan wraps everything and it's out of order, but it's mother too. This is what Earthbound is called in Japan. I went in like a secondhand shop and there were like 5,000 copies of this. There's like a whole row of them just sitting there and there was the price for it. It's 1,400 yen, complete in box. That's about 14 bucks, guys. That's how much this goes for, like RPGs go for in Japan. Like nothing, like nobody wants them. So why is it so cheap? I know why it's so cheap in Japan for this stuff. I don't want to get into it, but you can watch Adam Korlick's videos where he talks about why games are so cheap in Japan. It's not because like they take care of their stuff. It's because they have to pay to throw it away. So they keep it in good condition so they can resell it later rather than like why throw pay eight dollars to throw away this game when you can just sell it at the store for like five bucks or ten dollars if you keep it better condition right there you go i said i was going to say it but there you go there's the short gist of it but this has been sitting around so long that the tape is starting to like discolor you can see man very cool i've played this first one once again on the genesis the second one i've never played these were like my wife's families when they were little and they they became part of my collection when i got married <laughs> one of the benefits of getting married one of the many but it's earthworm gem uh one which i think is worse on the super nintendo than on the genesis and earthworm gem two there you go very quirky interesting side scrolling games has that like very mid 90s like attitude or tood as they say and uh, earthworm gem's kind of a cool character I've heard people say that they find these games like really hard to play, but like I didn't, I don't remember the first Earthworm Gym being very difficult. I did beat it back in the day, 
pretty sure I did. I got very, very, very far into it. I played a lot of it on the Sega channel. <laughs> That's a deep cut. Any of you guys know what the Sega channel is? Maybe I should do a video about that. Famous racing game on the system. Everybody has it. For almost the entire time I've been collecting, this game has been worth $3. Like, that was the game by which you could judge all games. This game was $3. I have no idea what it is now. I'm sure the number below is surprising. But it's f 0 I felt like everybody had this game. I feel like if you bought a Super Nintendo, they just gave you this. <laughs> Still a great overhead or kind of third-person racing game. I like it a lot. Be sure to pick the pink ship, though. You're going to have a hard time if you don't get the pink ship. These are from that same collection from the guy that like bought the reproduction cases. But the rest of it's real. The game is authentic and the manual is authentic. But it's Final Fantasy II, which is Final Fantasy V in Japan. And canonically never played it wah, wah. it's in the backlog sorry guys i'm gonna play it i promise so it's be really good let you see the back of the box here oh man i can't the box is so big i can't see if i've got it in the the the, the view there we go is that in focus i can't tell anyway it's final fantasy if you're this into watching collection videos that you've made it into, how long has this freaking video been going? 32 minutes? Holy crap. If you've made it, we're not even like close to being done. I gotta speed up. <laughs> if you've made it this far into this collection video and you don't know what Final Fantasy is like, I don't know what's going on. Of course, like a third of my viewers don't like video games. They're, they just come from like car channels. I don't know why. why. Why is that? You guys that come here from like other channels that have no interest in games, why do you come to my videos and watch them? Is it just to hear me talk? Why does anybody want to hear me talk? I don't know. Here's Final Fantasy III. <laughs> this is the same thing. It's in a reproduction box. This box looks a lot more authentic than the others. You probably could have fooled a store owner with this one, but it is not real. I can tell you it's not real. The weight of it, the paper's wrong, and the, the glossing of it's weird, even though I have it in a case. You can just see that it's like a little too shiny, but the, the game and the manual are authentic. So supposed to be great. This is Final Fantasy VI in Japan and canonically, and many people consider this to be the best one. Still haven't played it. It's in the backlog. I'll get to it. This is the Final Fantasy game that Square Enix made for us dumb Americans because they didn't think we could do it. It's basically an RPG for kids. Never played it. It's Final Fantasy Mythic Quest. Or Mythic? Mystic? Mystic Quest. There we go. Never played this. It's supposed to be really dumbed down, but people seem to really like it. It has a little bit of value, I think. I hate this game. I have tried playing this game on many systems over many years, over the course of several decades. I cannot get into it. I'm just too dumb and the controls are too clunky and I can't figure out what's going on and I suck at it. It's flashback. This has come out on, I originally played this I think on like the 3DO, but I played it on the PC. I played it on the Super Nintendo. I've played it on the PS4. Like I've played it on so many different systems and I just can't do it. I don't know what's wrong with me. Something's wrong with my brain, guys. I don't know. I don't have the brain. I have the cognitive fortitude to play this game. <laughs> but there it is. Sports game. I don't know where this came from. Frank Thomas, Big Hurt. Frank Thomas was huge in the 90s. I mean, he was a really big baseball player. He has a really cool pinball machine. The pinball version of this is great. This one I've never played. But it's supposed to be a fairly decent baseball game on the Super Nintendo. Most Nintendo consoles have like 5,000 baseball games on them. I think there's more baseball games on the NES than any other type of game. This is G2. It's not a flavor of Gatorade, guys, I promise. It stands for Genocide 2. I think it's a side-scrolling mech action game, but it also might be a shoot 'em up I can't remember. I picked this up from my buddy who needed something. He wanted to trade for something I had, and I ended up picking this up from him. I don't know what it's worth, but it's supposed to be fairly decent. It's kind of sought after. I like Super Famicom games. I love the way they look. I just love the shape of that cart. This is currently my favorite shoot 'em up on the Super Nintendo, because it's one of the few I, I've actually played. <laughs> I did get the one credit clear on this. This game has unbelievable slowdown like it feels like you're playing the game in slow motion and i think that's kind of what makes this the definitive version that people like to play because you can beat it you can like one credit clear this game it is really difficult the arcade version is like one of the hardest arcade shmups i've ever played but it's gradius 3 and this one's really cool you can pick your loadout and what weapons you want your ships to have and what it can upgrade to 
and uh, really cool and a lot of fun. I enjoyed this a lot, and it's relatively inexpensive. So if you're a shoot 'em up fan and you like Gradius, but it like kicks your butt really badly, try this version of it. It's a little long-winded because I said like it's playing almost in slow motion, but it lets you experience the whole game, and it's doable. So give this one a shot. This is a terrible game, this is, like so bad. I don't know if I played this on the Super Nintendo or if I played it on just the NES, but it's not good. It's Home Alone 2 Lost in New York. All of the Home Alone get, Focus. Kevin. Kevin! Focus on your face. It's trying to focus on Joe Pesci's face. Anyway, there we go. <laughs> this is a terrible game, and all of the Home Alone games are pretty awful. And this is, like I said, no exception. Terrible game. I, I played it around Christmas a few years ago, and it, like, kind of ruined my memories of Home Alone. <laughs> This one I found at a yard sale. It was just a throw in with like a, a collection of games I had. I didn't know that this was like a valuable sought after game. It's kind of rare, but it's home improvement. And I did play this. It has a subtitle. I forget what it is though. Anyway, you play as Tim the Toolman Taylor up here and it's like a side scrolling action puzzler and you use various tools to complete tasks like nail guns and tape measures and speed squares and plumb bobs. I mean, I don't know, just like all the standard carpentry stuff he would have. It was very clunky. It reminded me of a mixture of like Flashback and Jurassic Park on the Sega Genesis. So I didn't get very far into this one, but I did play it. It was not a good game. I'm surprised this one has so much value to it. I picked this up from a buddy. This is like a ninja RPG, I think. It's called Anindo. And then what's the subtitle? Way of the Ninja. Ah, yes. Anyway, zip off to new adventures, race through dungeon mazes, seize hidden treasures, strike back at fire dragons. All the normal stuff ninjas are known for. There you go. Anyway, I think he made me a pretty good deal on this, and I'm interested to see like how much this is worth and how much I paid. Also, this is in the backlog. I've never played it, so we'll get to it. Here's one that's in the backlog, and I can almost guarantee you I will spend less time on this game than like any other game in my collection. It's Jeopardy Sports Edition. I think... Why did I keep this? Usually when I pick up like a collection or a bunch of games, I'll like trade away this garbage or like sell it. I kept this one for some reason. Does this one have like a weird value? Is it like uncommon? Did somebody like tell me they wanted it and then I just never gave it to them? I don't remember, but there you go. Jeopardy Sports Edition. I don't know anything about this game. I didn't even know I had it. It's Jim Powers, uh, Jim Power, The Lost Dimension in 3D. Man, okay, cool. Let me know about this game. What is this game, guys? <laughs> like, is it a side scroller? Is it like Space Ace? Like, what is it? Is it a Mahjong game? Who knows? Man, this one's dirty. This is another movie tie-in game. I've, I don't remember if I played this or not. It's Judge Dredd. This is a terrible movie. Although, like, Sylvester Stallone was all right in it, and Rob Schneider was annoying as always. I liked the new Dredd movie that they made with Carl Urban that, like, they never made a sequel to. They should have spent more time with that one. That was a good one. Another Super Famicom game. I don't know anything about this one. It's Kabuki Rocks. It's in my backlog. You can see how much I paid for it below. But let me know about this one and what it is and if I should look forward to it or dread it. <laughs> like, judge dread it. Another baseball game. This is supposed to be relatively decent. I kind of watched a little bit of baseball when, like, this guy played. But it's Ken Griffey Jr.'s Major League Baseball. I think it's supposed to be one of the better baseball games on the system. But mine is, like, dirty. It's got, like, sticker residue and there's, like, fu like fuzz on it. Whatever. There's another one of those games with reproduction cases or a box. But the game and the manual are authentic it's kirby's dreamland 3 and i think this is like an expensive game isn't this an expensive game it's like over a hundred dollars or something anyway it's a kirby game i can't see what i'm doing guys there we go there we go there we go is that in focus i can't tell you don't care like most people don't watch these they just like listen in the background but excited to play this one never played it i've only played a few kirby games and continuing with that kirby superstar i Got this from my wife's house. The reason I know that is because it has their last name on the back of the cart. And I'm looking at it right now as I show it to you. But this is like a compilation of a bunch of the Kirby games. Like, right? 
I can't remember. Anyway, this is in the backlog. All the games are in the backlog. The only Kirby game I've ever played or finished is the original Kirby on the Game Boy. So there you go. They're all in the backlog. I, I came into Kirby late in life, guys. I've never played a Simpson game that I like, and I'm sure this is, you know, right in there with them, but it's Krusty's Super Fun House. I don't know what this is. I hope it's not like the other ones. I wish they would just give us like a normal, like side scrolling, like action game, but it's always like some weird puzzle crap like a puzzle platformer and ugh, i don't like puzzle platformers that much on like 16-bit systems but let me know if this one's any good i'm sure it's not this is an snk game wrong negatory ghost rider this is a takara game that was famous for being on the neo geo but they obviously ported it to some other stuff it's king of monsters 2 it's a open almost beat em up fighting game where you play like giant like monsters like Godzilla and Ultraman or not them but like generic ripoffs of them and uh it reminds me almost of like a wrestling game in a way anyway I used to like this at the arcade when I was little and then I played this version I didn't think it was super great I'm not sure if like the game is just worse than I remember if this version is just like boring <laughs> but it was really annoying that like, the enemies would like kind of like stun lock you but it is cool because you're the arena where you fight is like a cityscape so you're knocking over buildings and things like that no one ever used to talk about this game ever like growing up there's about a million of these games in Japan but we only got a few in the United States it's the legend of the mystical ninja I've never played these What's his name? He has like a Gunbare Goemon's his name. Gunbare Goemon. Anyway, I've never played any of the US ones. I've played like one of the Gunbare Goemon games on the Famicom. I have several of them, but it, like I, I was not able to make much progress in that one because like it was, I think, an RPG and you needed to be able to read Japanese, which I cannot do very well. But excited to play this one. This one is 100% authentic. It's real. It's complete. I picked this up for I think free you'll see below where I got it from somebody at work just like gave it to me because they knew I collected and they had it but it's Legend of Zelda a link to the past I played this game I played this game on and off probably a dozen times since it came out and last year I sat down and like gave a real worthwhile honest attempt to finally beat this game and I just kept getting stuck I just kept getting stuck I just I don't have the patience anymore to just wander around aimlessly till I like doing trial and error till I figure out what to do I was having to stop like every 10 minutes and look up a walkthrough and I didn't want to do that and I was just not having a good time with it I don't I don't know I think it's a very good game for me I, I think I gave it like an 8 out of 10 or something like that but I wanted it to be like a 10 out of 10. I wanted it to be the greatest game ever, and it just wasn't for me. I just don't have the patience or that mental bandwidth to, to do a lot of trial and error. I do that at work, guys. I'm a scientist. Like, I do a lot of trial and error at work, and I don't want to come home and do that. I just want to, like, give me some more clues. This game needs to give more clues. So, sorry. I know everybody loves it. Maybe if I, like, grew up with it and played it more when I was younger, I would think this is the greatest game ever. But... I honestly have kind of felt like that about all the Zelda games. Like, I feel like they're very good, but everybody acts like they're the greatest thing. It, like, it's just Zelda and Pokemon. When I, like, look on Reddit, that's all anybody cares about. Zelda and Pokemon, neither of which I think are even, like, I mean, they're good, but they're not, like, in that upper elite echelon of games. I think it's just, like, trendy. I don't know, man. I'm about to get, like, bombed in the comments for this. <laughs> And here's another one of these like ROM hack homebrew things that was in that box. The Legend of Zelda Goddess of Wisdom. I'm sure this is a, a hack of a link to the past. I don't know. I feel like I wish this was like an easier version, but I know it's probably like a harder version of the game for the people that have played it like 5,000 times. <laughs> played this a lot on the Genesis. Don't think I've played it on the Super Nintendo. Is it the same game or is it different? Is it like Aladdin where it's two different versions? But it's the Lion King. This was, I picked up in the same batch where I got home improvement. I think it was at a yard sale. I can't quite remember, but I remember they were together. And this box was like destroyed. And I like unfolded it and like ran over it with like a, I put like a, maybe a damp piece of cardboard over it and then like ironed it with an iron. Like you'd iron like a dress shirt and it like rejuvenated the box. It came back to life, but. 
Is this one as brutally difficult as the one on the Genesis? I don't know. The like the monkey swinging part like drives everybody crazy, but I've always been able to get through that relatively easy. It never took me more than a couple minutes, but uh, the part where you're running into the screen as Simba and the stuff's chasing you, I feel like it doesn't give you enough time to dodge the obstacles. So that part was always challenging for me. Pick this up at a local store that never has good deals, but this one was okay. It's the Lost Vikings. This is a 2D puzzle platformer where you play as these three Vikings and each one has like different abilities and strengths and you have to like switch between them to solve these puzzles. I kind of like picked this up because it's I'd heard people talk about it, but I probably shouldn't. I don't really like that style of game. <laughs> I don't really like those kind of puzzle platformers. I get bored with them really easily. Anyway, but I was happy to have it. I, let's see if I'm right. I think I paid $40 for this, maybe, or maybe it was worth $40 when I got it. Something about $40 with this one. Let's see how my memory was. Call me out on it. This isn't a pickups video I did. This is a really fun arcade game I used to play when I was little. It came out on the, the US Super Nintendo and it's not that expensive, but it's not cheap, you know, whatever, but it's super cheap in Japan. And so I picked up the Super Famicom version of Magic Sword. And uh, from wh what I could tell, it's exactly the same as the US version. It's even like in English. So anyway, happy to have this. I'm looking forward to playing it. This is another one of those games that was in that like homebrew bootleg box and this game is supposed to be great it never came out in the united states it's only in japan and it's i think it's like extremely pricey but it's supposed to be a wonderful like one of the best side scrollers on the entire system and it's magical poppin p-o-p -P apostrophe n you can see it at the top there let's see if it'll zoom in on it I know it won't. There, oh, 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 there we go. Magical popping. Anyway, of all those homebrew games, this is the one I'm most excited about playing. Anyway, I would love to have a physical copy of this, but I've never seen one or known anybody that had one. <laughs> I think it's like a, is it a thousand dollar game? Six, seven hundred, nine hundred dollars? I don't know. Something like that. All right, guys, this video has gotten long enough. We're going to cut it here. And we'll do a two-parter. <laughs> I don't I don't know very many people have the patience to sit around for this whole video. So tune in. This video is on Saturday. We'll have the next one come out on Monday. So tune in Monday for part two of this video. And if you made it this far, thank you guys. I really appreciate it. Please like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps the channel. It's the best way to help the channel. And I'll catch you guys next time.